Whether we like it or not, social media is here to stay. And how is it affecting the fishing game? We're going to talk about that on this episode of Fishful Thinker, the podcast. I'm Chad Lachance, and you're listening to Fishful Thinker, the podcast. All things fishful, all the time. Hey guys, Chad Lachance here. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of Fishful Thinker, the podcast. Brought to you again this week by the fine folks at Sportsman's Warehouse. Visit them at more than 140 stores nationwide or sportsmans.com. And I'm happy to see their opening stores in my home state down in the southeast in Florida. And it's been fun to watch that company grow over the years. So stop in, check out their selection whenever you're thinking camping, hunting, fishing, outdoor cooking, anything like that. They've got you covered at sportsmans.com. Guys, I posted on my social media today that I was looking for a topic for a podcast. And it's kind of ironic that one of them that got ahead of steam was the very concept of, of social media in fishing. And what is it doing to fishing, good, bad, or ugly? And I thought I'd address it quickly because this is going to be a short podcast for one. And it's just an opinion too. Everybody's got their opinions and, and the same thing with a lot of things in fishing. There's no wrong answers. Some are better than others, and you know, but at the end of the day, there's no wrong answers. And social media, whether we like it or not, is taking over um, in a lot of aspects of media in general. Now, I want to give you some quick background before I get too far into this. One... I've been in the fishing industry now uh, for basically right at 20 years, and I uh, started as a fishing guide, was taking kids fishing, doing kids derby, stuff like that. Uh, then the opportunity came to have a TV show in 2008, and when that opportunity came up that we, we might be able to get on TV, I refocused away from being the fishing guide all the time and focusing on the media side of it. Well... When I did that, the first thing that happened was you have to be on social media if you're going to launch a TV show. And so I joined up to Facebook was the first one I joined up with, and I went from there. Now, of course, we all had things like MySpace whenever back in the day. Uh, you youngsters won't have any idea what I'm talking about. But, um, but really, the first true social media that I got involved in was, was uh, Facebook, and that was in 2008. Obviously... It's changed a lot in the in, in the time frame since then, and it being social media in general, everything from Facebook and Twitter to you know Instagram and TikTok and all the rest of it from there. But it's changed the game in fishing a lot. So let's talk about what I think the changes have been, and what of them I think are good, and what I think of them are bad. Now, I'm gonna start off with the good stuff, uh, or a couple of the good things that I see about social media, and one of them is knowledge period. At the end of the day, knowledge is key and spreading knowledge around is fantastic. So you have these days all the knowledge you could ever want at your fingertips on your phone, in your device, on the boat uh, that you have con- you know, contact with, with genuine experts and everybody else. So I see the knowledge side of it as being a very good positive side of it. I also think it's good from the standpoint of certain causes that get advanced. Uh, Social media helps with advancing causes because the word gets out, and that's a really good thing uh, about a specific cause, a, a saving access, or whatever the case might be, whatever the cause might be, it's a good way to get the word out and grow it around. And the more popular your cause is, obviously, the faster it will grow. And so that's a key part of, of what I think social media is good at. And I also like, from social media standpoint, there's just there's, there's, there's social side of it, so to speak where you see how your friends and your acquaintances and even people you don't know are doing uh, with their fishing or whatever. Now, <clears throat> all of that is a, all very generic things that are good about social media, but I started off by saying, well, there's knowledge at your fingertips and there's tons of it. But here's one part you have to be very careful of. Social media has no filters. There's no barrier to entry. Uh, so anybody that's ever held a fishing rod can be an expert on social media. And I see a lot of that these days, a lot of that. And if you're not careful, you as an angler can go down crazy paths if you're looking for knowledge and you end up following people that really don't have any more knowledge than you. John Gerock wrote, the, the Trout Bum, famous author, uh, wrote a long time ago that when you go to a seminar somewhere, uh, 
you, you understand that seminar speaker may not know any more than you. What you know is that he's good at, at seminar speaking, but not necessarily fishing. But at least in that scenario, and I do a lot of public uh, seminars. Uh, in that scenario, you're at least to some degree vetted. You have some sort of credibility before they put you on stage. In my case, that started as being a fishing guide and, and, a, and a good reputation as a fishing guide. So they started putting me uh, up on stages to talk about the techniques I use to stay consistent. Well, that's all great. But when it comes to social media, there's no vetting. And so a guy may have learned about, you know, the latest technique two days ago, and now he's an expert on social media. And if you follow him, you're not going to get very good knowledge out of that situation. So social media lets everybody be an expert, whether they are or they are not. And they just have to decide that they, that they feel like they're going to be. And if your posts are popular, even if they're incorrect, uh, it, you can get a lot of traction and you can gain a big following or conversely if you're very uh, very good at producing short videos one of the problems I run into these days is as an angler dealing with social media is my promotional partners want short videos well how can I communicate anything intelligent in seven seconds but one of my major partners wants seven second videos because that's what get traction well my shtick has always been education i want to teach people to fish i've spent my entire life studying fishing it's all i do it's all i've done for a living for 20 years and therefore i w i like to be able to share that knowledge but i can't do that in seven seconds but some kid who started fishing last thursday who's real good at producing catchy videos can far exceed my my um base of, of people, so to speak, or my fan base, pretty quickly just by being good at social media, not good at fishing per se. So that's one of the things I see. Everybody's an expert on social media, and that's something you have to really be good at gleaning uh, the good and the bad out of that uh, for certain. So that's bad. Another thing that I think you have to be careful of on social media is just flat malicious lies. Um, and, and, you know, there's even a running meme about being an expert when you go to your buddy's spot to take pictures of your fish. Well, just to mislead the public. I know that that goes on at a high level uh, of misleading of people in general. So if you're trying to get information about places uh, that's not a good strategy either because you could run into straight up misinformation that's being put there on purpose. And I see a fair bit of that and it's basically just ways to lead people off and down the wrong tangent. So that can be bad about social media. And another thing is, that this is the classic one, and this is one I've had to be very, very careful of as a guy that's produced a television show for 16 years, uh, hot spotting. When we put a place on TV every single week, every week for 730 Saturdays, I put a TV show on and somebody sends me an email griping that I disclosed their fishing hole. And at the same time, I get emails from somebody else saying, thanks so much for teaching me uh, about this particular place, whatever it might be. Now, I want to point out the overwhelming majority of the places that I have filmed and, and therefore talked about, not only did we have um, a, a permit to do so, which you don't see a lot of on social media these days. People just go film and they get away with it uh, because it's supposedly not done for profit, never mind that a lot of people are making money on, on social media, particularly in TikTok and Instagram. Uh, paid advertising is a, a real thing. And if you have a big following, you can make a lot of money doing that, obviously. And therefore, anyone that's shooting a video in that argument is doing so for profit, and they should have a, a permit. But that's a whole different story. When you're on a TV show, you almost always have a permit or you're going to get in trouble. And then the second side of it is, um, in most of the cases, I was paid to go there and do it. In other words, uh, Colorado Parks and Wildlife was a major partner for a long time. Please go to this, this, and this park and show everybody about this lake in this park. Well, then invariably I do that, and then somebody yells that I showed their lake on TV and ruined it for them. Well, okay, maybe. But let me throw this little tidbit out there. I've been living overlooking, I, ha I live lakefront, I'm very lucky. I can, I can see the lake that I guide on, I can cast into it from my deck. I have very close contact with the water that I guide on. I've probably filmed 15 TV shows here in the last 16 years. I've done a bajillion short videos from my home lake over the last 16 years, and it hasn't changed one iota, the catching in my lake at all. It hasn't changed anything. 
Where hot spotting gets to be an issue, in my opinion, it's just my opinion, is small bodies of water. Because there, basically, people have them surrounded. There's a reason I advocate anglers that are up and comers that are just learning their skills to fish smaller bodies of water because you've got them surrounded. You can fish all of it. You can see all of it. You can make decisions based on how to fish on small bodies of water much easier than you can big bodies of water. So when where I look at hot spotting uh, or, or basically putting out there to the, to the public that such and such place is fishing really good or not good or whatever the case might be, the smaller the body of water the more that's an issue. The less known the body of water is, the more that's an issue. So if you're talking about a small little lake in the middle of nowhere that no one's ever heard of, you might very well drive way more traffic uh, to it by putting it on social media. And that's, depending on how you look at it, good or bad. I'm of the opinion that, again, sharing, sharing is better. We need more anglers. Uh, statistically speaking, as a percentage of society, anglers are getting to be smaller and smaller. Yes, there's a, a couple hundred thousand more anglers this year, licensed anglers, than there was last year, but there's a couple million more citizens. And so as a percentage, we are not keeping up. And the way to get people to keep fishing is to see success in fishing. And so social media can help with that because people can find good places to fish or good techniques to do so. But you have to be careful about hot spotting small bodies of water uh, or it's going to be an issue. When another issue where it can be bad social media wise, um, in my opinion, can be a little bit of harvest stuff. When you see guys just flat harvesting and even more importantly than that, and I'm all for harvesting fish selectively, some fish, not all the fish, not the trophy fish, not from every place you go fishing. Uh, I am certainly not a did you get your limit guy every time I hit the water and I don't freeze fish. So that tells you right there, I don't harvest very much fish. But I do believe that um, that there's sometimes, like for instance, crappie bites, where once a guy finds them, you can catch them very easily. And when there's something like a crappie bite that's on real good, hot spotting can be a major thing, even in a bigger reservoir. Everyone and their uncle will show up because they know the bite's good. Just for the record, that's been going on for years and years and years in secret circles and, and various clubs and stuff like that. It's just a matter of now people that are a little bit less or more careless, let's just say, uh, put it out there to the public and then the, 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 those fish will get cleaned up in a hurry. And that happened on my home lake here after one guy posted a bunch of pictures of a school of crappie uh, that he got into and very clear photos of where he was on the lake. Three days later, that hole was cleaned out and there was literally like 50 car crappie carcasses laying on the bottom of the lake where somebody came and got him, filleted him, and left the carcasses right there, which is not even legal and tells me they were poaching in the first place. So that kind of thing can be really bad. But here's another thing that I think about social media that's that's one of them that I feel like has gotten to be almost the worst, and that is the comparison aspect. Uh, there's, a, there's an old saying that comparison is the thief of joy. I do believe that there's kids on social media, particularly young anglers, new anglers, even if they're mature, uh, that see the success from other people uh, in, you know, encapsulated into one photo and think that they've got they're not there. We don't have the skills. We're not as good as that guy was or whatever the case might be. So there's a little bit of a comparison thing there that's bad. But even worse than that, and this is one is probably my single biggest pet peeve at this point, and it's gotten really bad in the last few years especially, and that is the amount of time fish are being kept out of water for that precious Instagram shot. And delayed mortality is a drum that I have beat a lot. I've done whole podcasts about it. It's a real thing. When you get together with fisheries managers and, and fish physiologists, and I have several friends, including one that's a doctorate in fish physiology, he says the, the grip and grin will be the death of fishing because these days, no one can catch a fish without even taking a picture of them. It seems like that that's the biggest thing. It's not a matter of I caught it. I'm in it for the gram. I got to get a picture of it. If I didn't get a picture of it, it doesn't even count. And there's even guys, there's a well-known fishing guide in Denver that I don't think's ever taken, ever, ever caught a fish that he didn't take a picture of. We don't need to see pictures of all 62 smallmouth you caught that day. We know what a smallmouth looks like. 
do yourself a favor and be quicker about getting fish back in the water and not always having to get pictures. The pursuit of the PB, the personal best. Well, now not only do we have to get pictures, but we have to get measurements of every fish too because, geez, it might be the biggest one I've caught. And I get it. People want to have that affirmation that they caught these fish and they this, that, and the other. Still, at the end of the day, you're t- keeping fish out of the water for the sake of posing them for a picture. And really gets me when you see them laying in the rocks, laying in the gravel. I caught this fish, but I can't use my hands and hold the fish, so now I'm going to take this rainbow trout, and I'm going to lay him in the gravel so I can get his picture. That's a dead fish. You might as well take him home and eat him. Saprolegnia, look it up. Ick, you might have heard of it in the fish tank. Long story short, you rub the slime coat off the fish, and he's going to die three weeks later. He's not going to die when you let him go. He's going to swim away strong. He's going to die three weeks later from the, from the infection he got in his slime coat because you removed it by laying him in the rocks for your picture. Same thing with the carpet on the deck of your boat. Uh, very, very hard on fish. And certain fish, it's not nearly as big a deal. Bass are pretty good about dealing with that kind of stuff. Trout are not. Uh, wipers, really bad. We keep a wiper out of the water for even just a few minutes, he's going to die. They have a very hard time. Any of the frankenfish, any of the man-made species have a hard time regulating their blood chemistry, and therefore they die. Ironically, wipers are big fish and strong fish, so they're they're typically tired when you get them to the boat, and now we have to have pictures of them on top, and that's not healthy for the fish. So, the, another one that really bugs me is, and it's not even legal in Colorado, it is in some states and not in others, the culling rule. You cannot legally cull fish. Well, I see guys on my home lake and elsewhere, and there's certain industry people that lead the charge on this one, and it's not even legal in their state in, in one particular case, so I'm not going to name a name. But culling is what happens, the, the, by definition, is putting a fish in your live well and then releasing him later. And once you put him in your live well in the state of Colorado, he is yours, period, which this podcast airs from Colorado. You cannot do that. Well, lots of people, they have to have that five bass picture. We got all five of these fish, so we're going to ride around with these fish in the live well so we can get that one picture with all five of them, which means now they got to ride around the live well. Then they got to be handled, and I don't know about you, but getting five fish in your hands or in two guys' hands is not that easy to do. Uh, because they're just hard to get a hold of, which means that particularly the first couple of fish to come out of the live well for this are now dealing with that. So they had to fight you. Then you had to be unhooked. Then they got to go in the live well. Then they got to be dealt with for a picture again. It's hard on fish, people. It's very hard on fish. So for me, the single biggest thing that's, that's creating problems with social media, or the two biggest things, are hot spotting of small bodies of water and a long-term delayed mortality that's going to happen because so many people have to have so many pictures of so many fish. And if you watch Fishful Thinker a lot, you'll notice we don't put fish in the live well to box for photos. If we're going to take a photo, they stay in a flat bottom net, a big old fray bill conservation series net, in the water. And that's so I don't take quote unquote possession of the fish. He's just in a net in the water. And the reason the flat bottom is important is his gills can swim around. It's rubberized coating, so it doesn't rub his slime coat off. Then he can swim around while somebody gets their camera together and all of that. We are not holding fish on the deck of the boat or in the boat or on the bank or wherever I am while somebody gets a camera ready. Those fish are in the water, fully submerged with their gills able to breathe. Uh, that's just all there is to it. And if, if I've got a fish that I believe has got any sort of problems, it may, I will not take a fish. I, I got some heat one time from my camera guy because I had a walleye in the 10 pound class and she was hooked horribly. And by the time I got her unhooked and I was doing everything I do to keep her in the water, I was concerned about her and we didn't get her up and out of the water for enough video for good, for good TV. I was willing to sacrifice the quality of the TV show to save this walleye because I knew she was going to have a hard time as it was and it was better to just be quick about getting her revived and released rather than that extra 30 seconds of video we need. And it may not sound like much. You say, oh, well, it's only quick business. I'm going to have this fish out of the water for, you know, extra 30 seconds for a photo. But if it took you 30 seconds to get them unhooked and then get your phone out and then you add it together, that fish has been out of the water for a long time after you just had a big fight. 
And so that's really, really bad. So that aspect of social media, I think, is really bad. Um, and it's just because everybody has to have a hero shot of every fish they catch these days. And that mentality is being driven by the Instagram and, and things like that. But I want to end this podcast, because like I said, this one's going to be short. I want to end this podcast that I believe that the positives of social media and the sharing of knowledge and the inspiration of getting people to fish, um, those things are better. And I think if you learn to filter what you're looking at, you can get away from the folks that, that come off as experts that may or may not be experts. And I'm not trying to say that I'm an expert. I want to point that out. I'm not, but I've got 16 years, uh, 20 years of guiding under my system and 16 years of traveling the country, fishing all over the place that gives me enough credibility uh, that I feel like I have something to offer. And if you ever send me a question or an email on on social media or post a question, if I don't have 100% firsthand knowledge, in other words, I did it myself, you're, I'm going to tell you flat out, I don't know. I don't pass on secondhand knowledge. And you see a lot of secondhand knowledge. I read it, therefore I know it. Never mind, I never really applied it. Or another one, this fancy new lure. Oh, I caught five fish on it today. It's my new favorite lure. And But if you're good at social media, it gets ahead of steam. That may be just that lure was good that day. Uh, but a truly credible source would fish that lure for a whole season before they say, hey, this is my new favorite lure. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but before you hear about anything from me uh, being positive, negative, or otherwise, I have an extensive amount of experience with it, or you won't ever hear about it, positive, negative, or neutral even. My current Tundra, I just had a discussion with, with Toyota about my Tundra. They said, well, we would like to see a write-up on your, on your new Tundra. That's fine, but I'm not at 10,000 miles yet. When I get to 10,000 miles on it, I'll know a lot more about it than I do right now, and I can give you a better write-up, a more honest write-up, because it's based on more feedback from, from the vehicle or the lure or the rod or whatever the case might be that I'm talking about. So with there being no barriers to entry, a lot of stuff goes from being brand new to the latest and greatest overnight because somebody's good at getting it to go around the Internet. So... Keep that in mind. Use your filter in your own brain when you're deciding whose intel is good and whose intel is not. Use your own filter when you're deciding whether or not I'm going to post pictures that give concise locations or location data or mention it uh, even. Uh, you know, mentioning the, the location, if it's a small location that's going to be heavily influenced, it's one thing. If you're talking about a state park, a big body of water, uh, you know, something like that, the state's spending a lot of money. The city of Fort Collins, here where I live, is spending million of dollars a year to pimp my home lake as the best destination in the area. Well, that's great, but it wouldn't matter how much fishing videos I put up there, it wouldn't come even close to the amount of exposure the lake's getting from the managing agency. And that's the same thing with, with the state parks and things like that. So in that scenario, I don't care. I don't think it's hurting anything to tell people about it, whether or not it's fishing good or not. And the flip side of it is it's harder to catch another guy's fish. If you learn to bite on TV or you learn to bite on social media, I should say, you may or may not still be good when you get there the next day. So that's the whole thing. But when it comes to little bodies of water or secret you know, kind of hard to get to places, things like that. I would be very, very careful about posting them. Uh, consider putting your ego in the back seat for a little bit on that, uh, or very least take take good pictures uh, that are safe. But please, people, be nice to the fish, and they will be nice to you. So. Social media, love it or hate it, it's here to stay. I try to glean the best out of it. I hope you'll follow ours at Fishful Thinker on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, or YouTube, that would be very important. Otherwise, I hope you'll tune in and uh, see what we're up to next week on Fishful Thinker, the podcast. Mm-hmm.